Oncology Tube Exclusive. So CD4K6 inhibitors are really an interesting class of drugs because they work intracellularly and they can help overcome endocrine therapy resistance by targeting the pathway that the endocrine uh, therapy is targeting. So when estrogen and the uh, binds to the estrogen receptor, it uh, causes this pathway to become activated. So if there's a mutation in that receptor, uh, targeting the intracellular pathway, blocking that such that the cell no longer is going through the progression in the cell cycle and is arrested in G1, uh, causes the, the tumor cells that are mutated to be able to overcome that endocrine therapy resistance. The Monarchy trial, which uh, examined the outcomes uh, with abemacyclib and endocrine therapy, and the Natalie trial, which examined outcomes using ribocyclob and endocrine therapy are very similar. The uh, main outcome was invasive disease-free survival, and we see a benefit uh, over time that is persistent in both of these trials. The Natalie trial has a shorter uh, follow-up currently than, uh, than the Monarchy trial does. Neither of these trials have shown yet an overall survival benefit, likely because the data are immature, uh, and we'll need to continue to follow these data out in order to see whether or not uh, an overall survival benefit uh, is seen in either of these trials. Both the Monarchy and the Natalie trials defined high risk in a bit of a different way. The Monarchy trial had two specific criteria. The first was any patient with four or more positive lymph nodes. And the second criterion was in patients with one to three positive nodes and one of three high-risk features. Those high-risk features were related to tumor size, grade, uh, as well as KI-67. This left a gray zone in patients who had one to three positive nodes but didn't have high risk features uh, and leaving care teams to, to ask whether or not uh, if we went back to the operating room to do additional surgery and axillary lymph node dissection, whether we could find additional positive lymph nodes such that a patient would meet criteria for the use of adjuvant abemacyclib and uh, a trial that my colleagues and I, uh, a study that my colleagues and I did as well as a retrospective review of the Cenomac trial demonstrated that the, uh, the use of uh, uh, axillary lymph node dissection is really not indicated in that setting in order to solely determine whether a patient might meet criteria for abemacyclib. The high risk definition in the Natalie trial differed in that all stage two and three patients were considered, though the stage two, uh, and that was regardless of, of nodal status, the stage 2A patients it could have just one positive node, or if they were node negative, they needed to meet some additional criteria related to tumor features and or genomic risk to be determined to be high risk. This newer set of high-risk uh, definitions uh, reduces the need for the discussion of whether or not a patient needs to go back to the operating room for axillary lymph node dissection. There are three main uh, CDK4-6 inhibitors in clinical use right now, palbocyclib, abemacyclib, and ribocyclib. And only abemacyclib and ribocyclib have been shown to be efficacious in the adjuvant setting in early, uh, early stage breast cancer. Two trials, uh, uh, evaluated palbocyclib in the adjuvant setting in early breast cancer, uh, neither of which uh, really demonstrated uh, positive outcomes as it relates to cancer outcomes. So palbocyclib is not approved in the adjuvant setting. There are probably a couple of reasons why. Uh, the trials probably were not enriched for high risk enough disease to have enough, uh, enough events to really be able to tell a difference. Uh, additionally, the Penelope B trial only uh, treated patients with palbocyclib for one year as opposed to two years of treatment in the Monarchy trial with abemacyclib and three years of treatment uh, in Natalie with ribocyclib. The natural trajectory of novel agents in the treatment of breast cancer are that we evaluate them in metastatic and advanced cancers, then in early breast cancers, and then we expand the indications in early breast cancer and potentially bring them into the neoadjuvant setting, all of which is currently under investigation in CD4K6 inhibition. So we're likely to see expanded indications in the future for early breast cancer. Uh, we're likely to see regimens of neoadjuvant therapy for our hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancers that currently don't have great responses. 
Uh, there are also trials combining CDK4-6 inhibitors with anti-HER2 drugs uh, for our HER2 population, as well as with immunotherapy because there may be some synergy between uh, CDK4-6 inhibition and immunotherapy. So a lot of exciting things to come. If you like this video, please consider sharing and subscribing on this platform with others who you think would also be interested. There is a written web companion to this video on oncologytube.com, link in the description, and many other cancer topics. Thank you for watching.